Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing a challenge from one of you guys in the comments, that being from the user Nitrogen on uh, one of the recent videos and that is next challenge, make an 8 star system with Haspel Life. So I saw it and I was like, it's been a while since we've made a custom system where I've designed some objects, stuff like that. Let's do it with the 8 stars, that's quite a good idea. So we need to try and do probably... Lots of binaries, maybe, possibly. You could have a big star with a lot of smaller ones orbiting it. But I'm going to see if I can make this work. So without further ado, we're going to hop straight into the action here. So, stars. I'm thinking probably something quite... As the dominant star, I'm probably thinking a high-mass star. So probably a blue star of some kind. So I want something that's quite heavy, like maybe Eta Carinae. 160 suns to hold that system in place as a dominant thing. Because this could be quite a very, very large, widespread system. So this is going to probably take some time to put together. But I'm going to go with Eta Carinae. So I'm going to place that straight in the middle there, slack bang. So we've already got a huge radius to work with here of placing more stars. So I'm also thinking, have a white, some white stars, have a few red dwarfs, maybe a binary red dwarf of some kind in here as well. So I'm going to go with, hmm, could use A to Karen AB as well. That's 55 masses. So that's still an enormous mass that could be causing problems. So I'm thinking... Gonna go with a star of only maybe one mass of sun. So maybe that old star, that's 1.77. So I'm gonna go with that as the secondary star. So I'm gonna place that at the edge of the green zone there. And it's already a huge range from A to Carinae. 0.05 light years. So if we look at the AU, for instance, 1000 AU, and then you're into the light years from there. So we're already getting just enormous distances. But you know what? I'm gonna place Altar within the burning zone. So we're gonna place it in the red, in between the red and the green. So about 1500 AU. I'm gonna place it there. So that's two stars. So we still need another six. We've got this guy in here, little zone around it, isn't it? So there you go. I don't think many planets are going to be safe in there. But we're, giving, we're already giving ourselves a bit of a challenge of trying to make the system hatable by already having very powerful stars kind of slapped in here. So I'm also going to use some red dwarfs. We're going to use Wolf 359, nice little small little star. I'm going to place that maybe around altars, like a binary with those two guys. So I'm going to put that... I'm going to put it on the edge of maybe altars range. I'm going to put it there. That's free. We're going to go with a yellow dwarf as well. So I'm thinking uh, Alpha A, possibly. I'm going to put Alpha A in here. I'm going to put it on the edge of A to Karanay's range. I'm going to put it on the blue. I'm going to tilt it up a bit, make things a little more interesting. But Alpha A there. I'm thinking a red dwarf of you as well. So I'm going to go with something low mass. Let's go with Trappist 1, because that's always a, that's a nice little star we can work with. So uh, where are we? Trappist 1. We need, Where is it? That, isn't it? Red main sequence star. So I'm going to place you there. Look at this little zone. So I'm going to place it on the edge of Alpha Centauri's orbit. So I'm going to put it about... I mean, we could have a whole system around Alpha Centauri alone. I mean, look how far away you can go before the main star takes control. So Alpha Centauri can have quite a nice big system. So I'm going to go with about... Let's go 18 AU from Alpha Centauri. Trap is one. I'm going to place that there. Okay, so that's now five stars, isn't it? So we've got five. So we need another three. So we've got Trappist one around Alpha A. I'm thinking even further out, we have another... Maybe possible uh, yellow star. So I'm going to go with... Uh, this one is a... Uh, Van Marines. That's a yellow dwarf kind of star, isn't it? What's that? That's a white dwarf. Never mind. Uh, I need Altari. You know what? It's been a while since we've used it. Let's use Tabby Star. Also known as KIC8462852. I'm going to place Tabby Star in. Let's try that. Let's see how that could... Be. Oh, it's an older star, isn't it? Mmm... May not open his... Let's, go, let's try it. I'm going to place it there. Tabby star. Has is that, is that still got his functional zone? What's his luminosity? 4.68 suns. We're gonna, we'll leave it at that then. So we've got tabby star on the edge there. Get rid of those uh, underscores. I don't need those. That's just my object sorting. So there's tabby star. So I'm going to place that there. So another yellow star. But I'm going to make that a lone, a lone yellow star. So if we go on... Uh, orbits are switched on. So that's what we've got so far. I'm going to lock back onto A to Karine now. So now I'm going to go with, to finish it off, so that's now six, isn't it? Yeah, that's six. Hours. I'm going to do a binary red dwarf at the dis the far distances. So I'm thinking maybe um, burn. Did we, we didn't use burners, did we? Bernard Star and Proxima in some kind of binary. So I'm going to place them even further out than Tabby's. We're going to place them over here. So quite, quite a far distance out of range. So they're almost in their kind of own system over here. So we've got Bernard's. And then we need a binary with good old Proxima. So we need a binary. Well, we're going to place it at a good sort of distance. I think at least an AU away. Maybe one point. Mm, they're quite close, aren't they? Uh, how far away can we go? I mean, look, you've got plenty of time to work with here. So don't need to be hundreds of AU. I'm thinking maybe a maximum of five. So let's go with maybe... Well, there only are red dwarfs. So I'm going to put them around 3.4 AU. So I'm going to put Proxima there. So there you go. 
Burner Star, Proxima Centauri. Got those two in their binary. So they got a little thing going on there. See how we're going to... We need, obviously, the system needs to run. So that's the way I always do my systems. I always like them to run. So you can see there's a bit of a bounce going on here. We'll see how they do. But they are there. Because it's a binary, the orbit button is always going to be a bit weird. It's probably best we keep it on trails for this system in particular. Uh, but there they are there. Because they are orbiting each other, remember, in a binary. So you can see, look, there, they are orbiting each other, despite having a central orbit around the star. So we're going to leave them there. Plenty, they've, they've got plenty of plenty of space to work with. Um, over here, back in the main system, so obviously we've got Ata Karana. We've got Ultar with its Red Dwarf companion, Wolf 359. Uh, we've also got Alpha A over here. That's obviously working with Trappist 1. And then lastly, we've got Tabby Star all by itself as a lone yellow dwarf. And then we've got our two uh, binaries, the Red Dwarf gang over here. So Proxima and Burnham. So that puts us to eight stars. So, looking very cool indeed already. Now, let's get it going. You got your eight-star system there. Pretty exotic, isn't it? I've inclined the orbits to make it more interesting as well. So, planets. What are we thinking? Well, I'm thinking close to eight to Karen, eh? You're going to have quite a big death zone of hot stuff. In this inner region. Something close to Aids Karanay. We're going to have a, a gas giant. A very large gas giant that's been torn to shreds. So I'm thinking something that looks pretty pretty nasty. So what are we looking at here? We'll use one of the customs. It's been, we did. We recently did the object tour of all the custom objects. So I'm thinking let's use some of these gas giants. We never get a take out for a spin. I'm thinking banded 47 immediately here. We're going to have it close to Aids Karanay. And then things are going to get pretty wild. So where are we? We're at 66 AU already. I'm going to place it maybe there. It's going to be absolutely consumed by the star, but I'm going to place it there. There we go. So first of the gas giants placed in. This one's got 1.8 Jupiter masses, and it is already extremely hot, as we can see. Let's rotate it the right way around, possibly. Is that going to work? Well, we could do it. Tilt it. How's that look? Yeah. It's got that cool sort of look behind it, hasn't it? I want to maybe move it a little further out, actually, because I want to have a bit of its unique features appearing. So I'm going to double that a little bit. How far is it where it needs to go? So I want it to have its cool looking appearance. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe not have it as the closest gas giant then, but there you go. So it has it so you can see its cool looking appearance. So how does that look? Slow it down. You can see its cool designs. I believe this was made by Mr. Missile a long time ago now. There it is. There's a full good look of how it looks. Obviously that will heat up over time. But we'll have it on its uh, main axis now. Maybe we have it slightly tilted like Neptune, for instance. A bit like that. Saturn, Neptune kind of tilt. Looks really cool. I'm not going to give this guy any moons. I don't think it deserves moons of being this close to a star of that power. So I'm going to give it a real red sort of looking trail there. But I want to have a closer star, a closer planet, 2A to Karen A than that. That one has been absolutely just shredded. So we can go over random gas giants. We don't need anything with fancy customization for this. So I'm going to place it there. That's our closest two planets are going to be extremely, extremely, extremely horrible to survive with. We're going to make it, we'll give it a few little band colors, but it's going to be... Probably dark colours, maybe a sort of redder shades in there. More, more like a traditional gas giant, but it's going to be scorching hot anyway, so... It doesn't really matter how this guy looks, in all honesty. So, there you go. Maybe just give it a more of a traditional looking sort of colour set. Let me make this a little brighter in colour as well. But nothing too... It doesn't need to be too ridiculous. Uh, mass. going to give it a bigger mass. It's going to need some mass to hold on to something like this. It's probably going to be at least 2,000 degrees at this point. See how it survives. How it copes. But it's a gas giant that's been torn to shreds pretty much, isn't it? So, rotational period. Needs to spin a bit. It is a gas giant. Give it a quicker rotation as well. So, we'll see how it does. I'm guessing it's very reflective at the moment because it is losing temperature. Yeah, albedo. I'm going to make it absorb more light than that. 35%. There you go. So, I'll give it a bit of temperature. So, how close is it sitting to the parent star now? So, Ata Karane. 47 years away. It's 70 AU. I'm going to lower that down to maybe 40, 30, 43. Yeah. A bit, a bit of temperature to uh, burn out on there. So there you go. It's the closest planet already. That's going to be scorching hot for the end of time, pretty much there. We could maybe squeeze another object in there, but we're going to move further out now. Because mo pretty much everything up to our first star, Altar, here is going to be having a hard time. We've got the Red Dwarf there. So this is not the place where we're going to be placing our Hatable planets. Because they will not have a good time. So I'm going to place some random Rockies, and we're going to get to customising them. So we're going to put one there. Gonna go for basic. You're not gonna have too many star objects in here, but I'm gonna place them all there. They all got their own unique sort of um, orbits and properties with their uh, Hatable zones. Um, and then Wolf over here. I'm also gonna place stuff here. 
I'm interested to see how the lighting is going to work in this. So remember, this is a red dwarf. So objects ideally do not can actually be quite close to red dwarfs. So we're going to place a proximity of objects in here. Quite a, you know, like kind of like Trappist One's real system. There's quite a lot of little objects all put in a small little zone. So I'm going to go with something like that. There you go. So we've got some planets around Wolf. Let's see how they all act, because they've each got their own... Look, you can see the luminosity disc changes for each of the planets. So some will be hot, some will be cold. It all depends how reflective they are. So what have we got here? Maybe we can have an edible world in here, then. We will see. Depends on how reflective... See, this guy looks like it already has water. So we're going to see how that functions. We're traveling a couple hours, because it is quite close to the star. Now, does it get temperature? Because that is the big question. It's 37 degrees. Can it hold on? Because if we give it a little bit of Aldido, we may actually be able to have this colonized. It's obviously got already some good materials built in its composition now. We remember in the latest updates, we've got all the materials to play with if we need. Uh, albedo. So look how high the albedo is. Woo -hoo -hoo. This may not be the place. If we lower the carbon dioxide, though, you may have a chance. So I'm actually going to lower that. I'm going to lower the carbon to see if it can hold on. But I have no idea how this is going to function. Uh, we need to settle the... Settle liquid, uh, melt, there you go, settle, equalise, uh, sea level is quite high, we're going to lower that, so we actually have some surface, settle the liquid, there you go, so it's a pretty cracked up looking well, but it looks like it's something, we've got something here that could be functional as a Hattable, we have to see, because it is increasing though, because it is warming up, so, let's see there, hmm, it's got a lot of starlight going around as well, so if we look at this, this could get pretty wild, but it's still increasing. That's obviously all to do probably with Eta Carine, I'm assuming. But we are quite close to the Red Dwarf as well, so it could be a combination. But I don't think this is going to be the place for uh, flight conditions. It just doesn't seem to have the temperature. It's just too much too much for it. Um, atmosphere. It's building an atmosphere of some kind. Okay, let's see you there. So atmosphere, how are we looking? Give it a little more. I'm thinking maybe a thicker cloudy kind of looking world. Maybe make it more of a reddish with the ray light. Give it the two-tone look. Should be pretty cool. So there you go, you see it's got the red and blue sort of zones there. Looks pretty nice. Let's see how we can make it look. A little more of the blue end maybe, maybe more of a paler white. Also we can completely change the uh, scale of it, see how it looks. I'm thinking more of a yellow for this object in particular. A bit more of a deeper yellow, kind of like a toxic-y looking design. Um, I'm going to increase this a bit just so there's less red prominent. I'm going to give it something like that. So it's still not the nicest looking place to be, is it? In clouds, I'm thinking maybe thick. So it's kind of be like a toxic kind of well. You know, it's just a rocky well that's just, or an Earth-like well that's just too hot. So it's kind of like an Earth becoming a Venus kind of design. So thick and fluffy clouds, I think that's a nice combination. Uh, there you go. So we're going to see how that well kind of sorts itself out. We're going to give it a yellow trail for it to uh, survive in here. But remember, the challenge of this video and probably videos, because this will probably take more than one episode, is we want Hattable Worlds. That was the challenge from the uh, user Nitrogen in the YouTube comments. Next challenge, make an eight-star system with Hattable Life. So we do need Hattable Planets in this system, ideally around more than one star. So we will have to make that work. So that's our first planet here. But, you know, while we're at it, we can also have some nice other ones. How's this world doing? 26 degrees! Is this the first Earth-like world? We got it with a random generation as well. Interesting. First of all. What is it made of? There's this stuff. What's this albedo at as well? Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it does need to be further from the red dwarf. How's this one? See, that one's in the red zone, isn't it? This one is it's in the more of the greener area. And it's also in the green area of Eta Carine as well. So, or in the blue, green bloom. So, Eta Carine isn't giving it a lot of uh, temperature. So, this world may be in the perfect spot to really get some good stats out of it. So, let's see how it does. Look at all the light it's receiving. So, it's receiving light from obviously red dwarf. Uh, you've got Ata Karane, I'm guessing, behind us. There's Ata Karane. Oh, that's Altar. No, where's Ata? You've got Tabby Star. That's not giving it light. You've got the uh, Trappist and Alpha Centauri over there. Uh, where, where's um, Ata Karane? It's the big scary star. There's Bernard. So that's definitely not giving it any light. There's Ata Karane. So let's just let it row go around a bit more. So it's receiving light from Ata Karane, Wolf, definitely Altar as well. They're probably the three local stars. Tabby Star and Alpha Centauri are probably too far away. But look at all the light it's receiving. You've got three different stars all giving this guy light at the same time. Very, very interesting. And it's functioning, which is fantastic stuff. So there we go. Let's lower the sea level down, though. We need a little less. Notice how that's changing. The sea level is actually changing the Hatable zone here. Look. If I change the sea level, it makes a difference. It does make a difference. So maybe we need to have it as a very heavy ocean world, then. Let's see how it how it does that. Let's speed time up. Let's see how it runs. 
So we'll see, we, we can't have land if we have to lower the sea level too much. Because it'll make the planet too hot. Maybe you need more ocean. What's its uh, albedo? 0.83. So we could have, there is room for improvement there. We could make it a little higher. It's too weird on its side as well. Is it rotated? Let it rotate a bit, game. There you go. 1.08 days. Get it a little bit of a spin. Let it cool down a bit more. There you go. A little rotation in there. But is it going to work in the long term? So it's all ocean, is it? There's no land showing. So it's full ocean. We can have a foot. We can roll with an ocean world. We'll, we'll roll with an ocean world. Yeah, we'll go with it. So give it a nice blue. Oh, what's its stats? That's what we want to know. Has got stats. 96 Earth similarity from a random generated object. Pretty decent. There you go. It's got similar size and radius as well. So it's a very, very good little uh, object there. Give it a nice deep blue. Why not? Yeah, that looks good. Nice ocean world. But we will have to come back and see if it survives with our little adjustments. Mm, there you go. So there's a, we'll leave that alone. That's pretty fine the way it is. Next world out. This one's in the red, so this is going to be way too hot, isn't it? So I'm not even going to bother building this. But it's very cloudy already, as we can see. I'm going to give it a white atmosphere. Thick, cloudy, Venusy like world. It's got oceans underneath. I'm not expecting those to last. I'm going to not really touch that. Okay. Leave it the way. It's a very hazy, cloudy world. Next planet out. What's well, so this? Another Earth flight. So this, this Red Dwarf has got a gold mine of water worlds around it. So pretty good. Okay, 28 degrees here. This one actually does have a surface. Let's see if we can build on that. So let's lower the sea level a bit more. Get some land. There you go. Get some land. And it's still in the green, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's see how we do then. All right. Vegetation on. Um, that's ice, isn't it? Or is it? No, that's surface colour, I think. Uh, ice, snow, that's switched off. Okay, so what's the surface colours? Uh, where was it? We need custom. Yeah, I see colours. Okay, so we can customise. Yes, okay. Um, vegetation on. So if we put... Always on. So that's what it would like if it was always on. So why is it not currently shown it as if huntable? Stats wise, we're looking at 90 and 19. It's got good temperature. Size is enough, I think. Yeah, it's looking alright. What's this uh, composition made of? We've got silica, iron, water, nitrogen. There's oxygen there as well, argon, yeah, so it's got all the bits you'd need. All thrown in there. There you go. Atmosphere. We're going to go with a nice sort of, uh, I'm thinking, a nice pale blue. With the two, with the. Uh, Whole thing there. Uh, ray light, I'm going to put that down to... I'm going to put it to maybe... I'm going to keep it, you know, a little more to the blue zone. Give it a little bit of a two-tone, like, greeny blue kind of shade. Make it look nice. Um, so there you are. Okay. I feel like it could do with more craters or some kind of surface features. I'm going to go with the... Not co contrast. Give it a little more contrast. I need the exaggerated terrain. Where's that? Oh, wait, where's that terrain button gone? It's... Oh, that's... Where, where, where is it? Terrain, terrain. Elevation. Is it elevation? There it is. I want that. Give it a little more to look at. There you go. Makes it look a little more detailed, doesn't it? So, there you are. Looks like a pretty pretty decent world so far. Right, let's have a look underneath. So, there you go. So, it's very yellow. So, we need to give it a little more uh, greenery. We've got some darker, rocky areas, maybe. The green, that is green is way too much at once. I'm going to give it more of a realistic looking plant sort of green possibly. So maybe with a deeper deeper sort of greens like that. Um, I like to have sandy colours as well mixed in. So a bit of yellow sand. But this is the mountain regions, these areas. There's not much on the low con low regions. You know you've got a bit of the ice mountains. You've got like the deep forest areas there. And the yellow areas of the sand. But there isn't much of that showing at the moment. But I'm thinking something like that. Uh, contrast, oh yeah. So we'll leave that roughly, leave that alone really, it's not really much difference. And then terrain makes so much difference, gives you way more detail. Alright, okay. So it looks cool down there, so you got all that detail showing a bit more. Alright, so there you go, got a nice looking world there. I'm going to give it a little bit of an ocean colour as well, give it a nicer looking ocean. A little bit more unique. Getting ocean colours, getting these right can be a bit of a pain. To get that light blue, that's what I want, something like that. And then I just want to sort of dim it down a bit, so... Colour like that, I'm thinking. Clouds. Oh, atmosphere on. Atmosphere's a little thick for my liking. Let's lower it down. And there you go. Looks pretty nice. 
Not too shabby. I'll leave the cloud settings alone. Wispy and thick. I'll stick with that. Looks good. So, we'll see how that world does. Still early days. Things could change as we run the simulation a bit. But so far, it seems to be in quite a nice window of temperature. I'll leave that alone. So, that's the first potential proper Earth flight we've customised. This one's got one... Look at the mass and radius of this guy. We can't have them all Haspel. It's a little... Uh, too wild if we did that so i'm actually going to completely remove the water from this because we can't have everything being nice so zero no water allowed let's also equalize gas settle liquid stabilize phases melt all stabilize that's it so i'm not sure what that is is that sulfur dioxide what, what exactly is shown at the moment is that an atmosphere or that's an that's a thick atmosphere okay uh, that was 100 opacity let's get rid of that so I guess this is looking like more like a Mars world already. Even the colours of the planet, it looks like a Mars world. You can see there's some sort of liquid on the surface. I'm not exactly sure what liquid that is. What, what is it? Uh, composition. So it's obviously, it wouldn't be iron silica. Is it night ammonia? That's in gas. Nitrogen is gas. Sulfur dioxide is liquid. So that's liquid sulfur dioxide there. And obviously, if we do this... Uh, where, where's, where's the button gone? We need surface, yeah. Um, I'm going to increase the sea level. And give it a sulfur dioxide ocean. For now. Sulfur dioxide ocean. Check that out. So the first of the different materials being added. What do you think of that? All this spreading is flooding. Sulfur dioxide. There you go. So we'll see how that world sorts itself out. Let's settle liquid. There you go. Still making its mind up though. It's a strange world. Put the atmosphere back on. I'm not thinking blue. Maybe more of a toxic -y kind of shade. Something more like that. There you go. So sulfur dioxide world there. So the toxic -y, toxic -y world there. Not necessarily your friend, that world. And then lastly, the last planet here. What have we got going on here? So this one is a rock. And you know what? We're going to leave it as a rock. Because they can't all be fancy. So we go, we'll give it. We'll throw a texture in there. Planet 15 is the one I like, isn't it? I like the craters. Planet 15, we'll mix that with Mercury or something. Maybe Rhea. There you go. Give, give some craters. Nice, nice lineup of craters there. So how does that look? Maybe it's just a, it's just a, just a normal rock. I mean, they, they, you know, you got to have some more generic looking worlds in here. So there you go with the nice craters. Mix them in together. There you go. Something like that. I think the texture of Rhea is a little too prominent. Let's give that one a bit more prominent. There you go. The colours as well. Let's change the colours. Uh, base colour. There you go. Want custom. There you go. Show those craters up a little better. Again, it's a generic looking world, so it's going to be pretty cratered up. If that's a darker colour, that looks pretty cool, actually. Yeah, there you go. Not black, but if it's a dark grey. Yeah, we'll lower that. Generic rock world. So there you go. There's your little system around wolf already. So we'll see how those worlds function in the long term. Back to Altar. We already put some planets around here as well. I'm thinking one gas giant in here as well. Just to straighten things up, I'm going to place it there. It's going to be low mass, so I'm going to make it like an Earth, like a Neptune mass. So I'm going to lower that. 25 masses of Earth. Lower it down a bit more. Neptune and Uranus in those sort of regions. Make it a little smaller than Neptune and Uranus's masses. So I'm going to put it at 12 Earths. There you go. Looking good. Okay. So closest planet to Altai. What do we got? So 28.8 degrees. This one seems a little too red, doesn't it, in the red zone? Yeah, that's not going to be the world we're after. I'm thinking making make this into more of a venus like world, actually, so... Maybe we give it carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, water... Mm, it hasn't actually got any sulfur dioxide on it. Mm, yeah, okay, alright, fine. So, carbon dioxide, we're going to increase this massively, so it's going to be a very thick atmosphere, exactly like Venus. We're going to give it a more Venus-like appearance. Very reflective. Very high opacity. No surface will be visible on this. This is going to be full-on, thick atmosphered world. Clouds, I mean, they're going to be max stats as well. Thick, you won't probably, you won't even see them underneath the atmosphere, but they are there. Thick and thick. So just ultra Venus mode. I'm going to give it high greenhouse. I'm going to lower the uh, albedo down. Even though it's got a lot of clouds, I'm going to lower that. Infrared, turn that up. Look at the 80. Oh, it's already got 19 ATM. We're going to give it maybe two atmosphere layers as well to really give it a kick. So... How are we looking? So, speed up time a bit. Let's actually let things run a bit. So, there you go. So, 
I put this straight to two, that's going to scorch it. Yeah, you go. I'm going to put it like that. So that's going to scorch this world. Let's put it straight maybe to 100, see how it does. Still increasing, yep. Maybe maybe make it a little more extreme. Let's go to maybe four. There you go. So make it just scorching hot. So they've got a real venus -y light world in there already. Carbon dioxide we increase. So we're going to see how hot it goes. Let's go maybe 400. See how it's, so it's cooling down from 400. So let's see sort of how it does from there. Maybe I want it to be more than that. So I want it to have a little more... Still decreasing. I want it to have a really big atmosphere, so give it a bit more. Still going. It's going slower. Maybe go a little bit more. It's now increasing again. Yeah, I want it to sit around 400, maybe, so it's like a venus -y kind of design. Underneath, how is it looking? I don't, know. I don't think uh, water should be on there anymore. I have to say, that's going to evaporate. That doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, let's stabilize the phases. There you go. It's all evaporated now, so gone. Underneath, surface. Well, it's going to be very, very rocky looking. Uh, is that a rate of strain? Let's turn it up. It's making it a horrible scorch world, basically. So, that looks more appropriate, doesn't it? Uh, why is there only a high button? What is going on there? High elevation. I only have high elevation. What? Oh, there you go. That's better. That's all good. So, I'm giving that sort of Venusy orange kind of appearance. This colour will make that more of a. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty mean, doesn't it? It's just a scorched rock. Clouds on, atmosphere on. So just full-on Venus mode. There you go. Let's see how it does. Oh, do we tidy lock it? Tidy locked Venus. Like, oh yes, let's do it. Where is tidy lock? That is going to cause problems. Oh, let's see how it does. Let's let it run. And also, let's make a save, because we haven't saved yet. We're going to go at eight star... Showdown. <laughs> there you go. So, I want to see how this runs. I want to speed time up. I want to see that tidy locking effect come into play because I'm thinking that could be pretty juicy. Let's see how it looks. It's taking time to save. We're making a big sim here. Let's let it save. Come on, game. Oh, it's a really long save, isn't it? Well, if it takes long, I'll be back with you when it's ready. Okay, everyone, so we are back. The game has actually just endlessly saved for multiple minutes, but I checked and made sure it actually saved in the files, and it was there, so I just rebooted the game. So here we go. Back in the action. So, tidy locking. Let's see this in action. So it is... Oh, yeah. So if we just hide it, you see that same face is facing the star constantly. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Deary me. So you can see it's already getting scorched. Um, if we look here, uh, surface, you can see that patch, that tidy lock patch is starting to show up so let's let it let's run it wrong this will help all our planets actually let's see everyone running in the long term just make sure everything's functioning obviously you still got the red those guys are just playing around aren't they over here let's just see how they just check up on how they're doing but yeah their orbit don't make sense but they're just orbiting each other they've gone trails that's the whole deal with those guys so they are fine um so if we go back over here so our venus -y world how is he doing now so let's see oh yeah Let's go on trails, because that is really annoying there. Oh, hello. What's going on here? I saw some orbit change. What's that? That may be because of our... Where's our gas giant gone? Is that the one causing it? I'm guessing it possibly is. Unless the red dwarf... The red dwarf could have caused that, to be honest. Um, let's see how that does. I'm just going to just get rid of that for now. just want to make sure they behave themselves, because that gas giant could be a bit of a troublemaker. So, let's go on trails. I'm thinking maybe the gas giant could be a bit of a naughty one here. I've got to lower the mass more. Maybe it's more of a gas dwarf now. Let's increase its... Uh... You know, I'm going to put it further out than the red dwarf, actually. I'm going to put it there. See how that... Oh, I don't know, actually, because wolf could really upset it. So maybe it does actually have to be closer. Uh, and then we just auto orbit it. Because the start... I'm guessing wolf probably will have quite a big pull on those in there. Because we did put it quite close to Altar. So that probably will upset it. So there we go. Place so it's a little closer to each other. So see how that functions. Uh, so we've got the other three planets. Um, so here we are. Right. Now you'd think it tardy locking would have caused more of a... It's the average temperature's changing, but that is sitting at a high 600 right now. Oh. Uh, maybe that is the way then, yeah. The average has gone down for obvious reasons, but, you know, it's still got high temperatures around the whole planet. So there you are. Okay, well, we'll leave that the way. So you've got a tidy locked Venus-like S-squared there. So next planet out, what was this one? We, this one hasn't been... This, this one's like 404 as well. Maybe we've got two Venus-like worlds. What's going on here? Underneath. Again. So I guess we have two Venus-y-esque worlds here. Maybe this one's a hot rock. 
Let's see how we let's see how we customize it. So there you go. It's already got yeah, it's got pits of uh lava on it. Let's make it very dark. Maybe this is a volcanic world now. Exaggerated tain, switch it up. That's contrast, now I want terrain. Let's put that up to max. Make the dark a little louder. Darken that down. So very, very dark world, volcanic in nature. There he is. Atmosphere on the clouds on, so I'm going to make it more of a reddish orange, but we're going to fade it. So it's not going to be a full-on Venus. We're not going to have the full-on thick uh, clouds. Black, sulfuric, volcanic looking, pretty mean. Yeah, that's going to be cool. So there's a volcanic world there. Lots of volcanoes going on. Um, yeah, I'm going... Where is it? So atmosphere. I want full-on red, red, pretty much. Or very, very deep red, orange. There you go. So not a nice place to be. Oh, yeah, that's pretty monstrous, isn't it? Or maybe the two-tone. That looks pretty weird, actually. I think I'll stick with the... Uh, keep it roughly in the middle. Or like that. Yeah, about uh, around zero, roughly minus 31. That's fine. So there you go. So volcanic world there as well. Maybe I'll make the surface a little lighter just so we can actually see a little more underneath. So you can see the sulfuric clouds there. So there you go. Maybe make it more of a brownish shade as well. A bit of brown barrenness in there. But there you go. So volcanic there. So yeah, quite a horrible lineup of objects here. Then you've got the gas, the gas world there. It's chilling. I was about to say gas giant, but it really is a small world. How hot is this, guys? This is at 77. So I'm feeling more of a regular generic gas giant colour uh, sort of appearance. So I'm thinking more of the uh, pale satin light yellows I'm thinking on this. So... More of these sort of shades. Not very interesting. Just a generic sort of more satin-esque world. So there you go. That menu's really annoying when it keeps closing. Stop doing that. But there you go. It's, 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 a, it's a satin light world. I mean, that's all to say, really, for this guy. The pale yellow design. Looking good. Yeah. Small satin, pretty much. So there you go, there's those guys. Again, I'm gonna throw an, I'm gonna pause and throw a save in. Cause I think that does help when you do that. If you run when you yeah, that, so if you pause it, it will save better. Uh, there you go. And how are we doing over here? So we've got our little mini system here. So everyone's functioning very nicely. Looking good. So you've already got 167. Woo! Yeah, we need to have a little relook at that. 34 degrees there on the Mars like. 329 here. The other blue one we put. 295. So yeah, we need to really uh 700 there. So this is the world we want to focus on. So we need a lot more albedo going on here. What's going on there? So sea level. It looks good, doesn't it? Uh, albedo, we're gonna increase that. Give it a much cooler look to it. So it seems to be a lot more nice now in that region. Remember, we're still on the edge of the Eta Karen A stars, so I'm going to give that a little more uh, to reflect. Average temperature, 204, so we don't want that. We need that to cool down. So we'll see how that does now we've done it. So I, want, I, I, don't, I do want this world to work. Again, with the blue one as well. That was the all-ocean world, wasn't it? So we want this sky, ideally, to be reflective as well. Maybe a lot of water reflects a lot. Sea level's at zero. Is that the atmosphere we're looking at, then? Oh, it is. Okay. I'm sure this was the... Was this the ocean world? Or maybe it isn't anymore. Well, in that case, it's going to lose its status as blue. We're going to make it just another another rock, effectively. I'm going to unthicken that as well. Put it down to a more of a generic colour. So more of, a, more of a boring shade, effectively, here. There you go. Because it's going to be quite hard to get good worlds in this region. Especially with this many stars to play with. Oh, I quite like the colour that's given that, actually. Yeah, I'll leave that alone. Cloud colour. I'm going to change that as well. I'm thinking dark sort of... Almost dark black clouds. Yeah, there we go. And then we've got the closest one here. That's just a hot rock as well. So the only true good world is this one here we're focusing on. I want this one to function. It's nice. It looks good. But I do believe it does need a little more abbey. What's this atmosphere layer? Is that? Maybe we could have a look at that. 50... Oh, my God. Oh, three layers. Damn, let's split it down to one. Give it a break. There you go. Try and help him out a bit. Let's let it function. See how he does. Cool it down. Cool it down. There you go. 
Make sure everyone else is functioning. Looks like they are functioning okay. We can only run so fast because we've got so many objects orbiting each other at different areas. All the different stars. Then we've got the planets around the stars all orbiting the major star. Looks like what we've done is helping out. That's good news. Hmm. Average is dropping. That's perfect. As long as we can get it below, below 50, I think we probably should be okay. Because, I mean, there's places on Earth that are 45 towards 50 so if we can get it below 50 ideally that's where we want to be then it look it's looking good there you go it's going below 50 that's perfect so how low will it go is the question we'll have to see how it functions will it freeze or will it keep going maybe we can lower the sea level a bit it looks like a bit of the sea level has increased so we're going to actually lower that now because i don't want the sea level being too prominent so we're going to lower that one a bit more land because that will probably affect its um oh hey, 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 hey. hang on a minute i did not ask you to do that game what are you doing what's going on there Oi. Ocean. That's weird. I might get my sea back. What was that all about? There you go. It's a little better. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it like that. That's fine. That was a bit naughty, wasn't it? Tried stealing my sea from me. I didn't, I didn't put it all the way down to zero. I'm sure I didn't. Um, how are we pacing? We're going to increase a bit more. Give it a little more of its blue back. There you go. It looks nice. 29.7. If it stays at that, that's fine by me. 49.9 on the hottest. You can make that work. Still decreasing though, so that's looking good. It's promising. Seems to be doing what we want. So, there you go. Cool. So, I think we've done the Altar system. I don't want to flood it too much with planets, because it would just be, get a bit ridiculous. So, we've got two planets around the centre star. you got a hot Venus-like. Then you've got the second volcanic well. Then you've got your uh, gas giant. I think I'm going to move you closer, though. Give it a little more breathing space. We're going to half that orbit down. Same with you. I'm going to lower yours. Give the gas giant a little more space to work with. Just decrease it a little bit. And then they're far away from the, uh, the red dwarf there. That's fine. So we've got a whole two-star system set there. Back to Ada Karane. We've got two planets around you as well. I'm thinking we could probably squeeze something else in here. Do we have a rocky? I'm thinking a super Earth. I'm thinking a large super Earth. I'm thinking something around maybe three radius of Earth. So I'm thinking random rocky. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm going to put it... It's going to be kind of a rogue sitting all by itself. I'm going to put it on the edge of the red. I'm going to place it there. Now... Oh, it's still in the red though, isn't it? Oh. So... Big rock. Big, big rock. Going to bet around 3.5, I'm thinking. 3.8, yeah. Big Earth-like world. 0.1 mass of Jupiter. Very, very heavy, big rock. Now, what does it contain? I don't think, really, this is going to have much. There's no atmosphere on it. It's completely bare. We can give it an atmosphere. But what do we give it? What materials does it contain? Silicate and iron. That's all he has. All right. Well... What are we thinking? Mixed material. So. What do we want to add? Helium, hydrogen. Mmm. So, oh. well, I'm thinking, no, it's going to be a pretty nasty looking world here. Sulfur dioxide. Going to get a big spray. Atmosphere generating already. So we're going to just spray it with a lot of that and see how this world develops on its own without us interfering. So I've thrown a load of sulfur dioxide on it. Obviously, the simulation is going to warm this guy. It's only at 26 right now. This world is going to develop on its own without us interfering. Because that's how the game's programmed now. If you don't interfere, it will generate atmospheres and stuff on its own. So this value should start changing. These values. And it should build an atmosphere. Hopefully, because it's built... Look, I didn't add clouds. It did it by itself. So hopefully we'll see it build something. Look, as an atmosphere now. Look, it's changing by itself. And that is the game sort of manually doing it if you don't interfere. So I'm going to let that world build itself and see what it ends up with. We've got a new super earth that's sitting in that inner region. And we're going to see. We're going to come back to it and see how that functions after a while. So there we are. But I think I'm going to end off today's video there, guys. That is part one of making an eight-star system with Hatable Planets. We've already got one world that seems to be behaving itself in the inner regions of Eta Carine, in around the Altar Star, or the Altar Star system, because it's around Wolf 359, and it is chilling there, looking pretty good. It's a 27.4 average. It seems to be doing well. 47.7 on the highest. It seems to be doing okay. Let's check its rotation speed. It's eight days. We're going to lower that down. We're going to put it down to one day. Give it a little... So it just, it just flips around a little quicker. So there you go. We're going to see how that behaves itself in the following episodes. But there we go. So if you've enjoyed part one of this, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. Let me know your feedback and sort of any objects you want to see. Any any specific objects you want me to build. Let's like say maybe a frozen uh, a frozen ice world, maybe a stormy gas giant, you know, volcanic, more volcanic worlds, stuff like that. Let me know what sort of world should I design. Obviously, we're going to have some Hatable worlds in there as well. Any takes on Hatable worlds, we could have a desert world with Hatable conditions, more of an ice world. 
Maybe even a volcanic world we could try and build with a Hatable condition. Let me know what you want to see with Hatable worlds, because the only the only goal for this system is have Hatable planets with an eight star system. So we're already meeting that. So let me know what sort of objects I should have. But with that, we'll send done everybody. Hope you all enjoyed it. Like I said, thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. Let's see if we can go for 200 likes on today's video as well, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe as well. Help us journey to 40,000 subscribers. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.